This film has been getting plenty of attention, and I wanted to see what it was all about. And here to see, I was pleasantly surprised with the result. No Mad Lad, directed by Chloe Zhao, and starring Frances McDormand, her free billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri fame. Overall, I thought it was a well done film about the Great Recession and the effects that it had on a lot of Americans, particularly those of older age, with a few young people sprinting for good measure, and how in times of crisis you can find something to make the most of it. Don't be tied into all the negativity that is going on around the world that is ahead. This film uh, was highly regarded by critics alike um, through polls and countdowns. Unfortunately, the majority of the public didn't even see it until you know, February, March time. That's how I caught it. I had to catch it fairly late because they weren't playing it anyone, obviously, because pandemic regulations and all that jazz. I think given the way that the film was released at this time, especially when last year you had such a horrific uh, scenarios occur, namely because of the pandemic and the economic and financial troubles and fallout that ensued, this film has a stronger relevance than ever before. It terrifies me to say that, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who will see Nomadland and say the very same thing that I'm saying too. And the fact that there are several mentions of people who contemplated, you know, or they thought about suicide or affected one of their family members is uh, quite cutthroat and on the edge. So I'm sure you're probably thinking that too. I won't say if I have, but, um, you know, I've had very unpleasant moments that I wish I didn't have to live through in. In many ways, this film was very much a Academy Award, Golden Globe nominated whiff of a script that I wrote back in 2017 called The King's Blues about a man who feels like he has lost everything within his reach. I've written this during the um, beginning parts of the, the Donald Trump administration and he goes out of his way just to escape from it all and live inside a shed in the middle of nowhere and hide away near a lake and near a nearby farm where he will not be tamed. It's a much more sort of funny and more darkly comedic version of Nomadland, but um, there's a surprising lot of similarities between that script and my uh, script that I wrote back in 2017, but I never read the memoir from which the film it is based on, so they're two completely separate stories, but the common thread of economic anxiety and fallout and the social powers that be uh, is are definitely strong relevant threads in both works. I've submitted it for a few writing gigs, festivals and competitions, so hopefully it gets it some attention, but you know, that's still up in the air. Um, as far as criticisms are concerned, I wasn't too big of a fan of some of the scenes that were there, mainly just to keep the film going. Maybe they could have trimmed one or two things out, but I think overall it had to say what it had to say. And, I'm, and as well, I am also not a big fan of the fact that the MPAA, or MPA they call themselves now, is rated an R for some full nudity. There was no F-words. There was no graphic violence. There was no sex. Not even a romantic triangle between Fuster McDonald's character and uh, a guy with a beard. There was no drug, hard drug use. No rape. Why is this an R? Because of fucking Puritans at the MPAA. Or the MPA, as you want to call them now. Let's say, if you show pubic hair and breasts, even... For less than 20 seconds, your film will be restricted to people 17 and over unless you're with a parent. Not PG-13, which I think this movie probably deserves. It got a 12A in Britain for suicide references and infrequent moderate bad language. And they didn't even mention nudity as an issue in the content description or what they would call extended classification or consumer advice, BBS against like not mentioned on the website whatsoever. I'm just like wondering, what is going on here? If I if I was uh, 
Fox Searchlight, which is now called Searchlight Pictures, that's another thing that kind of bothered me about this film, but I'm willing to forgive that on the basis of what the film is about and the message. Yeah, they should have just kept it as Fox Searchlight, not fucking Searchlight Pictures. What a joke, Disney. You've lost your minds. Yeah, they should have just appealed it just to get the PG-13 and at the MPA should just accept it as that instead of trying to fight them and say, Oh no, these will f- upset the Puritans and the social conservatives. But I don't care. There's a lot more things to worry about, like a pandemic and joblessness and poverty than some fucking tits and pubic hair near your pussy or whatever it is but I, I just wanted to get that off across because uh, these people get on my nerves sometimes so I've said what I've had to say there aren't many films that I might see in 2021 because you know with the pandemic and even with the vaccines that are in distribution things are still question mark up in the air we don't know exactly how things are going to turn out so just pray for rain and if you thought Three Billboards was a great film, which I thought, you know, it was good. It got better after subsequent viewings. But it does have a terrible ending. Nomad Lad improves on that and is more written properly, as it should be. And if you also like Nomad Land, you should also try a lot of the films by Alexander Payne. Because has that sort of similar aesthetic of the American Plains. And, you know, the glory and also troubles that it ensues. Like Nebraska, a film that the MPA considered too vulgar for an R.A., even though there's only one use of cocksucker and one use of fuck. There's no violence, no sex, no nudity, and the language is strong, but it's not excessive. It, it's not South Park or Wolf on Wall Street. I mean, Christ! I mean... It, that's a movie if you like this one you'll try Nebraska or about Schmidt that has a similar plot line now a film that the MPA said was too much for a PG-13 it's very good very well written about Jack Nicholson's journey across you know America itself and also give a try on the Irish film Pact which is um, a little film with Colm Meany you probably know from one of the Star Trek shows he uh, lives in his car um not too far away off the coast and you know befriends a junkie and they try to get along even with his problems at stake and trying to reconnect with a society that he feels like he doesn't know much about because of poverty or the the amount of time he spent in England working and feels like he's a lost soul Um, you know about Schmidt and uh, Parked are much better films than No Man Land but it definitely stands in ranking with those films in terms of themes and messages. I think this was a very well done film. It is not too pretentious to make me be put off it. It's just right. Skinny you puts on it off. Until next time, keep on watching.